Okay guys, um, we're going to do a quick video from Of Chaos. This is the Terran Achilles Marinus, the uh, OBT. Um, I've moved her out of the shallower 7 liter shoebox into this deeper um, European style. I don't remember how, these are 12 inches tall I think. I'm not even sure the dimensions, t to be honest with you, but <clears throat> you can see compared to a, uh, maybe they're about 10 inches. She's got 6 inches of substrate. Maybe just a, a tad less. Um, and she's been in here for hmm, two weeks. And what I did is I put a piece of cork bark in there that's kind of angled up and then it was flat so it goes all the way back to this area here so the water dish is sitting on top of actual cork bark and she made her home there and she has webbed up absolutely nothing so I'm gonna try and feed her you guys can watch and I'm just gonna give you my take on uh, keeping the Terran Achilles Marinus. Uh, I'm sure this is pretty much standard for most of the Terran Achilles um, genus itself, period. And we're going to throw a female Red Runner in there. It's been a while since Chaos has fed, so I'm kind of hoping she'll come out. I'm just going to snap. I have not seen her behavior in this enclosure yet because from the time I put her in there, she went straight down in there and I have not seen her out at all. So, there's been a lot, there's always a debate with this semi-arboreal statement. But people like to use semi-arboreal, and I guess it's, it's an easier term to use for a spider that comes off the ground a little bit and webs up. I'm not a fan of it. Um, they're a terrestrial slash fossorial obligate burrowing species. Dry uh, if you give them enough dirt, they'll dig. If you don't give them enough dirt, they're going to web up and they're going to create a roof over top of them so that they have protection from above. Um, and if you, if you put a little bit of substrate and something to climb on, they're going to use that as an anchor point because they have no place else to go. You can see she's, I don't know if she's coming up and out. Did that roach go in there? Oh, you guys are watching. I wasn't. Oh yeah, she got it. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, so, if you put two inches of dirt in there, and then you put a cork bark and a rock and some kind of leafy tall structure, they're going to climb it because again, they're they're an adaptable species. They'll they'll make their home wherever they feel they need to to feel safe. And that's generally what they do. It, it's not a matter of um, they're prone to doing this in the wild. They're in an area, right? They're, they're, they're in an atmosphere or in a, a an enclosure that they're not comfortable with. If you don't have, uh, what I'm trying to say is if you don't give them enough dirt to dig in, they're going to create their home somehow. So if that's where you get this excessive webbing from. Um, you know, you could put them in a, you know, a, a large size critter keeper, the ones that are about the size of a five gallon aquarium and put a couple inches of dirt in there and some anchor points and they're going to find some place to, to go in and they're going to web the crap out of it and create themselves hallways or tunnels or paths or whatever you want to call, uh, whatever you want to call it. And that's their protection. That's how they feel safe. Um, when she was in that seven liter tub, she didn't have that much substrate. So she, she did make a burrow. But then she webbed the whole entire top of it. So the whole entire dirt, there was no, you couldn't see dirt. It was completely covered in webbing. And that was basically, I'm calling it her roof. That was her protection because she didn't have what she felt enough above her to feel safe. Um, Bantu is the same way. Uh, when I redid her, I added three inches more substrate to her. And I gave her a couple sticks that were kind of in an angle, one on top of the other. And I made a starter burrow for her. She went in there and she dug down and out and she webbed all that substrate above that area where she actually tunneled in. And it's 
that's her roof. There's no other webbing in the whole entire enclosure, none whatsoever. Um, and I've seen OBTs that web the living crap out of the enclosure, even more than what a GBB does. And some of them may have ample substrates. Some, they all are different, but for the most part, these things need to have some type of um, security. And that's how they will be less inclined to be flighty, want to take off right away. And, and biting and then and then the, the threat postures that they throw up if they're if they're comfortable generally they're not going to throw up threat postures all the time and they're definitely not going to want to bolt on you so um and this wasn't really a care sheet because i want to wait i'm going to wait till march because i have some other things coming in march that um are the tyran achilles um different locality spiders that are coming in one from mozambique one from tete um, and, and then, of course, the different coloration forms of them, which would be like, I don't know, like I said, I, I don't ever understand these, these color forms, a TCF, a DCF, a dark color form, a TCF, I don't know if that's tan or true. And then, of course, the RCF, which would be the red color form, which I don't know why it's called red, because they're orange. Uh, there is no OCF, which would be orange color form. So I'm, I'm imagining that either the TCF is the true color form, or it is a tan color form and then the rcf would be your regular or red color form which is the actual normal ones that you would see i don't know how to tell them apart uh, i've only ever had these ones and i and the terran achilles marinus now i have the or the terran achilles cordatus now i have the species arusha and then when the tete and mozambique come in i'll have four different types of terran achilles um which which is going to be cool I, i'm really Again, I, I want to try and, and steer back from the old worlds, but I'm actually trying to, I think I'm, I'm going to steer back from some of the new worlds and get more of these old world species. Um, you could see her legs coming out. She's going to come out for us, maybe. Or she's just going to do some webbing. And the other day, she was completely enclosed in that. So the whole entire front of that was webbed up, so she made a door. And this morning when I looked at her, the door was open and her feet were out. So I'm like, okay, that usually means that, you know, she probably wants to eat. Um, she probably didn't need to eat. Holy crap. Look at her. She's huge. How the heck could she be that big? She hasn't eaten in forever. Uh, well, apparently she was hungry because she, she, she took the roach. But, uh, yeah. So that's kind of just my take on the OBTs. Um, She's given me some threat postures in the other enclosure. Um, not me, myself, more, you know, when I threw a, a feeder in there, she kind of threw up her legs and then snapped at the webbing. I think there was a video, she was in a video with that going on uh, that I did. Um, so, you know, when I get to the point where I get these other species in or these other locales of the Terran Achilles Marinus, I will do a a total uh, spotlight video on them because they are very fascinating and um, as of right now the the trade that I had going on for uh, sending Bantu and the two Samuel Paeus Reduncus um, we either are going to cancel that or hold off on it um, just because of this import that's coming in with these new Terran Achilles um, he wanted to get involved with it and I wanted to grab a couple of them so um, I decided to hold back on that and I, I may end up just you know if somebody happens to uh, have a mature male OBT, I may end up throwing it in there if somebody wants to send them, throwing them in there with Bantu and see if we can't get little baby OBTs. Uh, I didn't really want to do it before, but I but I have had people say that they would they would take them off of my hands wholesale-wise. So um, it's something that I'm going to think about doing because they are pretty easy to breed. Uh, it wouldn't be something I would do till it warms up. And what I would do would take them outside in our tent um, and then enclose them in the tent. Uh, our tent's a 12 person tent, so I can put a table in the tent and sit with a chair and put them in there. And I'm actually thinking about doing some of my videoing out there uh, in the summertime. Uh, where I could set up different equipment uh, and have a little bit more room. Um, I don't wanna keep setting the tent up all the time and I can't leave it up all the time because it kills the grass. But so yeah, um, let me see. I'll get you guys up top here and then we'll See if we can maybe just kind of pop the lid a little bit. See if she'll 
allow us to watch her just for a minute or two. I always say if you need to work with them or around them, uh, you know, cleaning out their enclosures or anything of that nature, the best thing to do is feed them. Uh, and if they're eating, they're actually preoccupied. So you can go through and clean out, you know, bits of poop or the boluses from prior feedings or, you know, spot bits of mold or fungus or whatever that you need to take out. So I don't know if she'll actually come out any further now that the lid is off, but we'll get her out soon. Um, we'll try to get some more video of some of these crazier uh, tarantulas that I do have. I got some nice pictures of the Ornithoctonus species Laos, Laos the other day. Um, everybody that came in the other day fed. And I'm going to add a clip on the end of this a video of the... Nah, maybe not. I'll use that for something else. Yeah, forget that. We'll just, we'll just do this. So you guys listen to me talk for, I don't know, 12 minutes and watch the spider grab a roach and come out a little bit. So... Um, there's some, some other announcements that you're going to see some, some other YouTubers make here in, in the near future. Um, especially the, the tarantula ones. Um, but we'll, I'll explain all that at another time. Uh, I want to make sure that we get some of the other people that we're looking for involved and, uh, I'll let you guys know some, some updates. So it'll, it's, I think it's going to help the community. Uh, it's going to help us as YouTube presenters or whatever you want to call us, um, we'll be able to get some ideas off each other in, in an atmosphere where it's easier for us to talk to each other. So, um, yeah, look forward to that. And then I have a short humidity video that I want to do. And, um, there's going to be some information that I got from, um, exotics lair. Uh, we had a nice chat yesterday for, I don't know, a couple hours. Um, talked about where he's from and the, humidity levels that he has to deal with and how he's got to combat mold and trying to find a nice suitable substrate for him to use for species like his cobalt blue that he could dig in or that the, the spider could dig in and then he doesn't have to worry about mold issues but with his humidity levels where he's at and temperatures it it's very difficult to deal with that so i'm going to talk a little bit about that um I don't know if I'll try and do that video later tonight. I think I just got to figure out who I want to use as uh, as the star of the video because again, I I am not willing at this time to consider getting in front of the camera just because uh, of the room. I don't have the room to actually do it. So there's chaos. Actually, she's put her roach wherever. So before she decides that she smells freedom and takes off, I'm going to end the video. And uh, say goodbye to everybody and have a great weekend.